Good evening. My name is Ray Shackleford. I'm representing the Houston Area Urban League. Uh, and so from a national perspective, for those not familiar, the Urban League has been in existence for 114 years this September. The second oldest civil rights organization, as far as Houston is concerned, has been in existence since June 1968. And our mission is simple. It's to empower black people and other marginalized groups when it comes to economic self-reliance, parity, power, and civil rights. So when you look at voting, that's the foundation for that. It's connected to all the work that we do as a direct service organization in addition to the advocacy work. So when you look at education and youth development, you know, what are the things that we're doing to better our students and make sure they have the resources they need so they can go on to be successful people? That's tied to voting. When you look at work for, workforce and training development, you know, what are the jobs that are available to the people in our community? How are we getting them the skills they need, not just for the jobs today, but for the jobs tomorrow? That's tied to voting. When you think about economic development and entrepreneurship, our business owners, you know, how do we make sure they get equitable access to contracts, whether that's women or minorities, that's tied to voting. Any and everything that you can think of is tied to voting and the work that we do with the Houston Area Urban League. And so for us, we were part of this lawsuit, not just because it's so ingrained in our history, but because it's tied directly to the work that we're doing today to make a better tomorrow for all Houstonians as well as all Texans. Uh, and so when you look at that, I think this is a landmark case that has very far reaching impact. Uh, you know, I think that today our legal team, you know, Jennifer, uh, I started out working with Victor and then Amir, they are amazing. So I, yeah. Literally, they are extended family. I don't know if they want to keep us, but they can't get rid of us. Um, we are definitely locked in. And again, we are so forever grateful for all the work that they did to prepare us, to make sure that we were ready to tell our story, uh, not just for ourselves, but you know, for the people at home. And you know, a lot of times people will say the voiceless, but the thing is to quote one of my brothers who's an activist in Austin, Chaz, uh, they're not voiceless. They have a voice, it's just people aren't listening. And so we're able to take off work. We're blessed in that perspective or to do this for a living to where we can be here and speak up for those individuals. Uh, and so I'm grateful for that opportunity. And we're looking forward to a successful decision in our favor and for the people that we serve.